しまった証明できるか守った守ったそして落ちた Hey guys, welcome back to TSN or the Sasuke Nerds. I'm your host Shane, and today we're going to be talking about something a bit different today. Something I know I always thought about as a kid was something that seems so simple a Ninja Warrior video game. I mean, come on, those are two of my favorite things in one package. How hard can it be? Well, today I'm here to talk about the different types of video games that the Ninja Warrior series has seen. Some are okay, some are really weird. Some are great, and some are really bad. So, to first dive into these games, we have to go way back to the beginning. As a kid, I didn't have an exact idea of what I actually wanted an Enjoyer game to be or to look like, because the only thing I could really go off was YouTube. So, my ideal Ninja Warrior game was something like this, not this. Either way, I would later find out about the first official Ninja Warrior games that were never released in America, but only in Japan. The classic Japanese game show Kinaku Banzuke, which used to be Sasuke's home, got a lot of games on different consoles the PS1, PS2, Game Boy Color, and the GBA. They were all developed and published by Konami, a major studio for games and especially arcades, with games like Castlevania and the TMNT series being some of my favorites. I'm not gonna go over all these games, given that some of them are either impossible to find, or I just don't have much to talk about with them. But I'll give these games their fair chances. To start, we have the series of games that were released on the Game Boy Color, Kinaku Banzuke GB. As far as I know, this series is the earliest form of Ninja Warrior games, as the first game, Chosen Monoho Kiminai, was released in 1999. For the most part, the course is a replica of the Sasuke 3 course, but for a Game Boy Color game, it's honestly pretty decent. At the bottom of the screen, there's a timing and a power timing bar. The timing bar being for obstacles like the Balance Bridge or Spider Walk, where you have to get a rhythm to make it through, and occasionally switches to the power bar, where on obstacles like the Hill Climb, you just kind of spam the B button. Cool. The stamina bar is especially important on stage 1, where the rope climb will utterly destroy your entire run if you lose all your stamina. There's also a text box that is an 8 bit Furutachi at the bottom, and it's great. To end it off, the final stage is a cool animation when you achieve Kanzen Seha, and a staff roll with honestly some pretty good music. In the end, I'd recommend this game. It's a short but fun game that functions pretty well. So well that there were actually two sequels to the game that came out in 2000 and 2001, respectively. GB2, Mokushi Semazu Champion, and GB3, Shinsuke Survival Retsuden. I'll commend GB3 for giving us a new course based on the course after Akiyama's win, but GB2 doesn't get a lot of points with its interesting changes. Yeah, this one was meant to be like Sasuke Jr., and safe to say, it's pretty bad. I mean, it's so easy and just adds nothing, so let's move on to the PS1. First of the PS1 games is Kinaku Banzuke Road to Sasuke, released in 2000. To say I have mixed feelings on this game would be a complete understatement, so let's get right into it. Right off the bat, I'll say that probably the biggest positive that I have with this game is that it looks really good. In terms of just general graphics and replicating the course, it does that in spades. The green cover from the early era of the show looks so great here, and it's pretty much on par for an average PS1 title. However, there is an elephant in the room the controls. This game is much harder to get to grips with than the GBC titles, and from the jump, you can immediately tell. I have to give the game props though, as there is pretty in depth tutorial on teaching you how to do the obstacles. And while I could complain that this happens after every single obstacle, you're gonna need it, as some of them have the most tedious or annoying ways to get across, or just straight up stop you in your tracks. I mean, just look at the first obstacle. First, you have to get a good run up by spamming the circle and triangle buttons, then you have to angle your jump right, then spam the circle and triangle buttons in a matter of five seconds so you don't fall in. I mean, come on! The first obstacle in the game doesn't have to be that complicated. That being said, though, I appreciate the creativity Konami tried to do with this game. It feels like they tried to change the formula up, but I can't say it worked completely. In the end, 
I'd recommend this game if you are curious. Just know it has a massive learning curve compared to the previous games. In 2001, Ninja Warrior got its appearance on the GBA. Kinuku Benzuke, Kimuro Kinsuke no Kanzen Seiha. Even though I praised the Game Boy Color game and said it was decent, this game is that but 10 times better. This game is based on Sasuke 7's course, even getting to choose some of the most prominent people like Ken Kasugi, Shingo Yamamoto, and Katsumi Yamada, the god himself of Japan. This is actually what the game is most known for, as for a while it was believed that Kane was featured in the game without his permission, and for that reason left the show after Sasuke 8. However, this was proven to be untrue in our interview with Kane when he said, No, it has nothing to do with anything like that, no. Anyway, the game also looks a lot better, has more in-depth controls such as using the spray and making certain obstacles have unique tactics like the cliffhanger. It's a really good handheld game and I'd give it a shot. However, my favorite official Ninja Warrior game of all would have to be 2001's Kinnikun Benzuke Muscle Wars 21 on the PS2. This game actually has all different shows from Benzuke, but I'll just focus on Sasuke for this video. Everything about this game just works for me. I can't explain why, but I love the art style, as once again the course looks good for an early PS2 title. It just looks so charming, though that might be just a personal thing. As a whole, the controls for obstacles are much more simple than the PS1 game, and it's for the much better. The game seems to put a more emphasis on the joysticks, making use of the new PS2 controller, and it works much better than the PS1 game. There's also just general improvements, like for the first time an announcer commentates the runs, and the course being updated to the post Akiyama course. Finally, there's this hard mode that I just loved as a kid. It makes the environments unique and the obstacles much harder, and it really kicks your ass, but in a good way. This is emphasized by the fact that the environments are changed, like how on stage 3 you're doing the course over the skyscrapers of the city, or how on the final stage you're climbing this giant rocket ship and if you fail, the thing collapses and you fall to your doom. Perfect. Overall, just a really stylish and fun game that I'd recommend. You know G4, don't you? The channel that brought over Sasuke to America, giving us faithful captions and cuts that we can laugh at, but also bond over from nostalgia. Well, they made a game too, and it's something. While well, you might expect me to rant on this game or tear it apart, I don't really have much to say about it. The game has some pretty glaring flaws. Your character drops like a rock after every obstacle, and compared to even the GBA games, I'd say this is a downgrade graphically. It's about as generic of a Ninja Warrior game as you could get, but that being said, it's not like it's unplayable or anything. In fact, I'd go as far to say that it's mediocre. The game has helpful tutorials, based off Sasuke 17's course, and even has some of the captions at the bottom of the screen at certain times, which is kind of cool and a reference to the G4. As a whole, it's nothing too special. I mean, it's basically made as a computer game that was made on Facebook, but I'll throw it a bone, it's harmless. But harmless and boring is nothing compared to this piece of trash. 2019, Gaming Corpse and Game Mill Entertainment, two companies I've never heard of, released American Ninja Warrior Challenge. Now I can't lie, when I first heard this was being made, I was pretty excited. A AAA Ninja Warrior game on modern consoles? Sounds interesting. The first international game too? That sounds awesome. And when I saw the footage of the game the day it was released, I realized it was everything I didn't want a Ninja Warrior game to be. Where do I even begin? Well, we'll start with the graphics. You can just look at the box art of this game and see how bad the graphics are going to look. But no, the in-game graphics are even worse. I know this term is thrown around a lot, but it literally looks like a PS2 game. No, worse, because Muscle Wars, Muscle Wars look better than this. In terms of the actual gameplay, it sucks. It's so slow and complicated and is somehow buggy as hell, making the game just a slog to play. It's also a slog in just getting across the obstacles. The pace your character goes at is just so slow, with every obstacle having some sort of complex button combination to get across. Other stuff too, like how the backgrounds look like the clay I use in kindergarten, Matt and Akbar look like they're deformed knees, and the training mode. This game basically functions like an NBA 2K My Career game, and honestly, 
I don't even hate that idea, but they pull it off in the worst way possible. There's this training part where you're supposed to build your character or something, but you'll be doing it more than the actual courses, and it's not fun at all. In the end, this game is a terrible representation of what Ninja Warrior should be in game form. After this game's release, I got to thinking, what is a good Ninja Warrior game without Benzuke to its name? With the only things we have in the West are shoddy mobile games, a mediocre Facebook add-on, and my sleep paralysis demon. Is there even a reason to try anymore? In 2011, a new grounds maker under the name Unreal K9 debuted his di series of Ninja Warrior games to positive acclaim from the fans. The first three games are all riddled with the charm of the Manzuke games, but just function just as well, despite its flaws. The controls were rather stiff in all the first three games, but the series just kept evolving and trying new things until its eventual peak and finale, Ninja Warrior 4 Physical Renewal, which was released in 2014. The game just feels right and fun to play, and while obviously there can be some improvements, it feels authentic and loyal to the series. Obstacles are adapted well, and even some new ones are made. The music is all original and pretty solid, and even encourages replayability with its leaderboard at times. It's a lovely message to the Ninja Warrior fans that always wanted to play their favorite show in a game, like I did as a kid. But it also shows how Ninja Warrior can be made in a game. The creativity and loyalty is key here. Do this, make Ninja Warrior feel fun and cool again, and I think we'll have a good game on our hands. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know this is the longest video we've made in a bit, and it's something different, but if you could leave our, your feedback in the comments, that would also be great. Take care, guys.